Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. Today we're gonna to talk about something which is really common and yet we don't always pay attention, burns. Burns are one of the most common household injuries that people sustain, particularly in kids. And more than just the burning sensation that you get, they actually cause physical damage to the skin. Now, join me, we'll talk about what causes them, how we grade them, how you treat them, and what the prognosis is. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Nene, a US trained cardiac, thoracic, and vascular surgeon, and a general surgeon. As a healthcare innovator and a health tech innovator, I wanna empower you to your best health ever. On this channel, we will share evidence-based medicine from all of us to you through our experiences and training about health and healthcare. The goal is to help you make informed decisions about your own health as well as that of your loved ones. We're here for you, so don't hesitate to reach out. So when we think about burns, we think about activities or things which can actually cause both a burning sensation and physical damage to the skin layers. And in particular, we think about scalding type liquids, fires, we think about sunburn, we think about electrical burns, and we think about burns from different types of chemicals. We grade these burns in terms of first degree, second degree, third degree, and even fourth degree. Let's go through them and so that you understand what they are. When you have a first degree burn, you typically have reddened skin and a lot of pain in that area. And that burn basically is to the superficial epidermal layers of the skin and does not really result in any damage to the underlying dermis, which is the active skin cells or to any other layers. The good news with that is even with just topical treatment, you'll actually improve and it takes about seven to 10 days. Next is a second degree burn. Second degree burns are more ominous in that they do cause uh, damage to the epidermal layer and the dermal layer and can result in blistering where you'll have these water-filled blisters. One pro tip, never pop the blisters until they're ready to pop on their own. Because what you've done is you've opened up a denuded area where the epidermis has come off and it's susceptible to water loss as well as infection. The, the good news with second degree burns is they also will heal, but they need a little more care and we'll talk about that in a second. The main differentiation between that and the next degree of burn is that you actually have sensation. And so they are painful and they do take longer, up to two to three weeks to heal. And it depends on how big the blistering area is as to how long it'll take. But the key to those is keeping them clean, keeping them dressed with antibiotic lotions and silvadine ointment and watching out after them so that they don't become worse. Next is the third degree burn. And that's the one that you really have to worry about. Everyone thinks that the quote unquote burning sensation you get is what you get with burns. But in third degree burns, the hallmark is that you have absolutely no pain at all. And what's happened in that situation is the burn has actually killed off or rather affected the epidermal layer, which is dead skin anyway, the dermal layer, which is live skin, and then underneath that gone in and, and affected the nerves um, underneath the dermal layer. When that happens, you'll actually have no sensation. And what you get is a very leathery type uh, configuration as well as uh, skin which is charred and often very, very hard. Those are the burns which I worry about because they won't heal on their own. They need to have active treatment with either escherotomies or debridement and sometimes skin grafting. Now, in second degree burns as well, if you have a very large area of coverage with a blister, you sometimes will need a skin graft. But in third degree burns, almost always, you have to have that uh, dead area of skin taken off and potentially a skin graft placed on it, otherwise it won't heal. What are the other issues that happen with burns? With, with uh, smoke inhalation and with other types of burns, you can have damage to the lungs. You can have severe loss of fluids and dehydration, particularly if the skin is all denuded. The other thing which people talk about is you know, what to do in electrical burns, because you may see only a small portion of it above the skin, but down below you have worse outcomes. So the next question is, when should you see a doctor and when can you treat this at home? I would say in the case of a first degree, which can also include a sunburn, by the way, you need to treat it locally. And the idea is basically to use antibiotic ointments. When you first get burned, put it under cold water and let it run for a good five to 10 minutes 
and then you can start dressing it. The same is true to some degree with second degree burns in that they will heal on their own, but if you have very large areas of blisters, you probably need to see a doc. The other things you can do with second degree burns with the blisters and all that is don't pop them, but when they do pop, make sure you dress the area with some type of uh, antibiotic ointment and or silvadine cream and then cover it so that it's not in contact with uh, outside dirt or grime or any other type of things which would contaminate it. One thing they don't talk about um, is to get a tetanus shot. Now look, I think you need that every 10 years anyway for any type of injury, cut, bruise, burn, or whatnot you get. But if in particular you've had a burn, it's a good idea to make sure your tetanus is up to date because tetanus is one type of bacteria that can lead to significant consequences. Now, the real question is, how do you prevent burns? Because we're always about a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And the idea in this case is that if we can prevent burns, particularly in kids, um, we're way ahead of the curve. And the main thing is um, keep matches and, and items which can fire up out of the kids' reach. Also turn pots which are on the stove with their handles away from you so that you don't tip over and get scalded. Always check the temperature in a bath before you put a child in or you get in yourself. It sounds like it's pretty obvious, right? But you'd be surprised how many times the water temperature is much higher than what you think, either on the surface or down below, usually on the surface because hot uh, comes to the surface. Finally, uh, the last thing to leave you with is burns are treatable. The prognosis for first degree and second degree is very good. Third degree do need medical attention to the point where you probably need to go in immediately. And if you're in the US, you would call 911. In uh, India, you would call uh, 108. But you need to be assessed and evaluated to make sure that it gets properly treated with uh, debridement of the dead tissue and grafting if necessary, and then adequate follow-up. So that's the gist of burns. Leave your comments in the comment section below. I've left all the references in the description. And as always, if you like what you hear, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe so that you won't miss the next episodes because we're always bringing out really, really good information. And then leave questions for us so that we know what you want to hear about because that's really important. And last thing is don't forget to share with everyone who is wanting to learn about this too. And finally, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next episode.